Praise the Lord, saints. Ready for Thursday Night Live. And I'm excited about what God is doing. Man, I've been, uh, Pastor Beth and I have been having conversations about some of the things the Lord yeah. is dropping in our spirit. Uh, even today, we were talking on the couch today just about some of the things that God has been saying. And I'm excited about what's coming up on Sunday. And uh, I'm going to be talking. I, I believe that the Lord is, I believe it's for this Sunday, the Lord has really been dropping in my spirit. And we've been talking a little bit about creative prayer. And uh, God has been dealing with me about how to get our prayers answered. Yes. How to get the windows of heaven open. I've been reading Perry Stone's book. And along with that, in the Word of God, I've been finding stuff, nuggets in the Word of God that I believe that is going to literally revolutionize your prayer life. And uh, I even called Pastor Beth in the, in the uh, uh, room today and said, listen, I'm going to teach you a whole new dynamic to prayer. And I want you to pay attention to me. And I sat down and talked to her a little bit about what God has been saying to me. So I hope that makes you hungry for Sunday morning. It does uh, me. Amen. Tonight amen. I'm going to be uh, I'm going to be I'm going to be talking to you about um, uh, a lot of the things that we're unaware of in our life that is hindering us. Yes. Amen. And uh, I want to talk a little bit about that, but I think you have some announcements to make. Um. Yeah. We have amen. Women of the Valley our Christmas luncheon this Saturday at 10 a.m. You don't want to miss it. We got some good food coming, and um, I'll be speaking. So invite somebody. We're going to have a good time. Amen. Pastor Beth's going to be bringing a word. And uh, these ladies always, they know how to celebrate. They know how to, yes, how to we have do. a good time. Amen. They really do. Listen, before we go any further, I just want to reiterate. I want to invite you all to be in church with us. Okay. Uh, church on the couch is not the same as church no, in the it's sanctuary. Not. Mm -mm. Amen. We are, we are to not forsake assembling together. Uh, quit playing your religious games of you don't need God and you don't need to go to church and you don't need to do this and need to do that. Uh, you know, you can say all the things that you think you need to do, but it's the intent of the heart that God is going to judge. Yes. So get yourself plugged in somewhere. If you don't, you don't go to prayer rally or you don't, you don't feel you fit here, find you a church where you do plug in. Amen. And submit yourself and become a useful vessel. Amen. Amen. Hey, uh, man, God has really been dealing with me uh, all week, but today he just dropped this in my spirit. And I want to read a little bit uh, 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 to you out of the book of Genesis chapter 22. Go all the way back to Genesis chapter 22. I'm only going to read a couple scriptures, but I want you to listen to this. After these things, God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham. And he said, here I am, Lord. He said, take your son, your only son, Isaac, whom you love and go to the land of Moriah. And offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. So Abraham rose up early in the morning, saddled his donkey, and took two of his young men with him and his son Isaac. And he cut wood for the burnt offering and arose and went to the place which God had told him. Uh, and on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place from afar off. I'm going to end right there because I wonder how many times um, we actually make preparation like Abraham did uh, for the many things that God wants to do in our lives. Right. That's or are we really so unaware of the things that God wants to do in our lives because we're so caught up in this world mm -hmm. and the things of this world? Mm -hmm. Many of us go through our daily lives unaware of how attached we are to the things that are always coming between us and God. True. Amen. Now, of course, Isaac wasn't coming between uh, God and Abraham. Right. But the symbolism here of what I'm going to preach and to show you how we must uh, have a heart to be obedient to whatever God requires to let it go. Right. Amen. Amen. So Abraham, uh, God had given him his son, his promise, uh, his covenant son. Amen. And then God said, I want you to bring your son and I want you to sacrifice him. Right. Yeah. And Abraham took the burnt offering and took help. I mean, took the wood for the burnt offering and made preparation to offer that sacrifice. Amen. Amen. So you need to understand that God knows our hearts better than we do. Yes, he does. The Bible even tells us in the book of Jeremiah that God knows the intent of our heart, that the heart of man is deceitful and desperately wicked. That who can know it? And then it goes on to say, God knows it. Yes. God knows our heart. Mm -hmm. So you need to understand that even though God, he knows our heart, uh, 
and he knows where he knows what we're allowing to come between us and him what's standing in the way mm -hmm. amen yeah. he knows how far you will actually go in surrender he knows what you're willing to give up and and what you're not willing to give up and that's the thing that god requires yes it's what uh, it's it's what you may think you're not willing to give up and abraham may have thought i don't know he may have had these thoughts in his mind like before like man i love my son more than anything i never right. want to lose my son of course everybody thinks that yes but he might have thought i i would i mean i'm, I'm i hope god never requires me to give my son because that's just one thing i wouldn't be able to do right right and 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 that's just like somebody saying i hope god never requires me to be faithful in my tithe or give offerings that's one thing i'll never be able to do or i hope god never requires me to make a commitment to go to the house of god week after week because that's one thing i'll never do i hope god doesn't require me to be a serious christian because that's one you know i'm one of those religious guys and i i hope that god never requires me to to have a soft heart or a kind heart or be giving or loving. I hope God doesn't require all this stuff of me because those are the things that I won't be able to do, right? Right. And, and, and here's the thing about, and then there's those that lie to themselves. I'll do anything that God asks. But see, the truth is God knows the intent of the heart. Yes, he does. Amen. He knows our true plans. He knows our real motives. If he, if he has our heart allegiance... Uh, then when God asked us to sur surrender all to his will, then we would surrender all to his will. True. Just like Abraham did. I mean, when God says surrender all, how many of you make preparation to surrender all? Do you even know yes. what that means? Mm -hmm. Do you even know, are, are, you, are you even aware of the things in this world and in your life and in your heart and in your mind that are standing between you and God? Have you ever taken time to identify the things that are uh, that are are hindering your walk with God. Do you ever think about it? You know, yes. do you ever let it come? Do you ever think like God, man? That just that that right there just kind of that thought or that mindset or that heart just kind of gets in the way. All right. See, when God asks us to surrender all, He means it, right? So it 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 it, it, it and this is the thing when God says surrender all and you say god i surrender all right right this is where most people kind of get lost and i know i'm talking fast because i have a lot to say in a short time and pastor beth has some words uh, when god asked us to surrender all it then becomes our job everybody say job job it becomes our job to trust that he will show us how right so he said to abraham uh you know go to the land of Moriah, offer there a burnt offering on the mountain, which I shall tell you. In other words, make preparation. And when you get to the place where I've prepared, I'll show you. I'll tell you then. God wants to reveal things to you, but you have these obstacles that you're unaware of in your life that are keeping you from being able to see yeah. what God uh, wants to do. See, it becomes our job to trust God, and then it becomes our job to obey God. Mm -hmm. And it's not all—it's it's not always our job to understand why are you know God's ways, mm -hmm. but it's always our job to be obedient. It's always our job to obey the Lord. Always, it's yes. always our job. And, yes. And and that, my my friends, is <clears throat> is not always an easy task. I couldn't imagine being in the place of Abraham. Right. That couldn't have been an yeah. easy task. No. I mean, not only on Abraham's part, but on Isaac's part. Yes. Right? I mean, because he had to be the one that was... I wonder if his dad even told him. I mean, obviously, yeah. you know, there were some uh, things going on there. But uh, it's not always an easy task. And in fact, most of us struggle to lay our will at the altar and many people come week after week trying to lay their will at the altar and pick it right back up this is why people don't have a prayer life because their will gets in the way mm -hmm. their time gets in the way their priorities are wrong and they don't have a giving heart because their selfishness gets in the way and survival gets in the way and struggle and yes. greed and all of these things and people don't have a heart focused on god because family gets in the way and loved mm -hmm. ones and 
and jobs and things because we have to focus on all this, thing, or we feel we do. Right. So these, are, these become the things that we're unaware of. They become the ex acceptable uh, obstacles yes. that we allow to stand between us and God and that we just experience God to a certain degree mm -hmm. and then we miss out on so much more True. of the Lord. See, but not obeying God is not struggle. You understand? It's not, it's not, uh, it's not just a struggle, but dis not obeying God is disobedience, yeah. right? Right. And when you read the story in Genesis about Abraham's, you know, faith, to have faith in God, even though God asked him to relinquish his rights over his own son that God had given him mm -hmm. and that was his covenant son, right? To trust God even unto death, that's really deep. It's really deep. I mean, <clears throat> that's really deep because, you know, a high percentage of people that in America, especially that call themselves Christians, they can't hardly even trust God into the sacrificial mode. Right. Into the realm of sacrifice. True. Yeah. They, they will give only what is not sacrifice. Mm -hmm. they, will, they will do little things that are not really reaching quite into sacrifice. Right. right? And they'll only go to a certain degree. They'll only devote a certain amount of time. They'll only give a certain amount of finances. They'll only, right? And they'll, they'll only give a certain amount of their heart to God. But that's not who God is. And that's no, not, it's not, that's not the arrangement that we're supposed to have with God. So when you read this story, you realize that he had to relinquish his rights mm -hmm. over his son to, and to, to trust God even unto death. Yes. And that's really deep. If you think about it, the truth is that trusting God is going to require you to make decisions to let go of things that come between you and God. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But if you don't know what those things are, right? Right. If you don't begin to pray and discover those things, exactly. You don't get into the Word and find out what is what is hindering, what is keeping me from breakthrough, what is keeping me from from reaching into the open heavens. Yes. What is keeping me out of the throne room? What is keeping me out of the Shekinah glory of God in worship? What is keeping me? What is, why do I feel like I'm on the outside looking in? Or why am I not receiving the word of faith? Why am I not receiving? Why am I not changing? Right. Why am I not growing? Right. right? If you think about it, why am I not growing? Yes. Right. And, 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 and what is, what are those things that come between you and God? What things? And I believe they are, and, and, and I can't pinpoint those things for you because I believe that they're unique to the individual. Uh -huh. I really do. When I was praying about this today, I went to a few scriptures. I'm not going to read them all, but, uh, I think they're unique to the individual. And, and the reason is because all of our hearts are different They are, and we all are, we are all drawn away and enticed of our own desires which are individual mm -hmm. desires, right? Yeah. And many people's desires are different. And, and, and that's why we must all work out our own salvation yeah. because we all have different desires mm -hmm. that God wants us to surrender. Yeah. Those are the things that hinder you as an individual, unique lover of God. And you can't love God the way I love God. And I can't love God the way you do. I, you, can't, you, can't, you can't just give up those you know, those things that I give up and think that that's yeah. going to yeah. be okay. Right. You have to be aware of the things God has required of you. You have to have personal conviction. All right. Personal conviction. And yes, there are statutes, there are doctrines, there are observances that the Bible requires all of us to meet. Right. There are all of them that we live under. Thou shall not. Right. Yeah. And thou shalt. Yeah. And of course, that's where we hold on to these things that are the statutes of the Lord. But I believe that we must all take a periodic look at our lives mm -hmm. and see what has priority yes. in our lives. You know, what has priority over God? Oh, nothing, Pastor. Bull. Bull, bull, bull. Amen. Don't get all offended because I say bull. I do things all the time to shock people. Like Sunday, I threatened to flip the bird, but I'm not going to flip the bird. I just threatened to. I'm just, 
getting people's attention. All right. I might say I did say up your fanny with a green banana, but uh, you know, people get all religious on me, right? I'm yeah. not gonna. I'm just getting people's attention. I guarantee you, when they see those things, it gets their attention. When I say the devil's a faggot, people listen, and it makes the devil mad. Amen. So. Uh, those are things that God, I, those, I'm an individual that God uses in a pe peculiar way. Yes. And those things, they prod and poke people and it gets people's attention to open them up to receive what God is speaking through this messenger. Uh, so uh, God told me that there are statutes and things that we all must obey, but then it's in this personal it's in your personal heart that God will ask for uh, the most from you. Right. Amen? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you don't have to just do what Johnny does and make it okay. You have to do what God requires you to do. You have to, you have to unlock yourself, unburden yourself, unbind yourself from. And you say, why do I have to do it? Because that's the job. Abraham, God didn't just say, I'm going to have you, I'm going to, I want you to sacrifice Isaac. He said, you got to prepare. And then there's a job to do yes. for this requirement. Right. There's a job for this requirement. You have to get the wood. You have to get these young men to help you carry the wood. And, and you have to bring the sacrifice yeah. to this place. And when you get there, I'll show you where to do it. Yeah. Right. So there was there was a job to do. So God s spoke to me today that many people's lives are being stunned, 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 stunted, stunted, stunted. That's it. Stunted, stunted, that people are stunted. And I'm like, what do you mean stunted? He spoke to me that people are stunted. Stunted growth is a reduced growth rate in development. And most of the time it's from malnutrition. Wow. Right? Wow. Most countries, people that have stunted growth, or even in this country, stunted growth most of the time uh, is from malnutrition. Nutrition. Yeah. Uh, stunted growth is primarily a result of that malnutrition. Malnutrition, many are malnourished in their spirit life because of refusing to let go of whatever. Mm -hmm. Right? Right. What is it that you're holding on to? What is it that is it, is it, a, uh, is it your identity in the world? Is it, is it greed? Is it your finances? Is it your, is it your, is it your will to survive? Mm. Right? Because some people, one. some True. people have that will to survive. I'm a survivor. Yes. I'm going to tell you something. I'm not a survivor. I'm victorious in Amen. Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I am vic. I am victorious in yes. Jesus Christ. Yes. All right. I am victor. I want to say it again. I am victorious. Yes. In Jesus, and that's where my only victory is found. Amen. In Jesus, amen. Amen. So, so God wants our attachments with Him uh, to be exclusive. Yes. Right. Right. It's like not. It's not. It's not me and God and my Cadillac. Right. Right. It's not. In fact, it's not me and God and my bank account. Right. It's not me and God and my, you know, fame or my personality or my. It's. God wants a, your relationship to be exclusive with him, personal. Yes, it Amen? is. Yeah. We are individual lovers. lovers. We are independent. Yeah. Yes. Nobody can love God for you and nobody no. can surrender for you. Every one of you must work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Do you understand? Yes. Every one of you. You must begin to find out, become aware of what is is coming between you right. and growth. What is coming between you and the next level of your Christianity? What is it? Some of you have a hard time even sitting under the word. You're impatient. Some of you, I mean, I could just go on a list of things. Yes. Right? right. There are things in my life that God is taking me through. There are things he's, uh, uh, actually, I'm going to tell you something. There are things that God is, uh, I, I shouldn't say that there are things that God is removing. There are things that I'm giving up. Hello? It's my job That's to right. surrender. It's, yeah, my job too. It's not God's job to make me surrender. No. It's my job to surrender. There are things I'm giving up, right? Yes. And, and God wants our attachment with him to be exclusive, not secondary. So find out what you're holding on to, 
whatever it could be. Yeah. Find out what is some of you wives, you're gonna go to hell just because your husband's going to hell. You're gonna follow, follow you're gonna follow that man. Yep. And and when you should be praying at the altar, you're following that man to mm -hmm. Starbucks or whatever. But you need and vice versa. Yes. And you're gonna find out. You are gonna find out when you stand before the Lord that I, I just I was just doing I just I didn't commit because this and that and that. You're gonna find out. But anyway, enough said. Stop holding on and let go of that stuff. Amen, Pastor Amen. Beth? Amen. You know, um, I was reading uh, in Matthew, and it's in chapter 19, and I'm going to go to verse 16. And it's talking about Jesus counsels uh, the young, rich ruler. Amen? Come on now. And I'm going to read it, and then I'm going to kind of share it. He counsels. He counsels. Yeah, yeah. Counsels. Jesus counsels. Oh. So Jesus counsels the rich, young ruler. Counsels. Councils. Yeah, so counsel. now behold, one came and said to him, good teacher, what good thing shall I do that I may have inter internal life? Come on. So he said to him, why do you call me good? No one is good but one, and that is God. But if you want to enter into the life, keep the commandments. He said to him, which ones? Jesus said, you shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, honor your father and your mother, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. The young man said to him, all these things I have kept from, from my youth, what do I lack? Come Jesus on. said, if you want to be perfect, go sell what you have, give to the poor, and you will, you will have treasures in heaven, come follow me but when the young man heard that saying he went away sorrowful for he had great possessions wow so wow so what must i do to be saved so consider his background amen good teacher he addressed jesus but he wanted to let him know no one is good except god amen jesus was immediately getting him to think about what was good God is good. Amen. And then he kept saying, keep his commandments if you want to in internal life. Amen. Jesus told the young ruler the six commandments. He wanted him to know what he lacked. The key statement was here. He was religious and sincere in his pursuit of righteousness. Ooh, he was religious and sincere. But listen, his problem was that he considered himself to be faultless concerning the law. Jesus said, if you want to be perfect, sell your possessions and give to the poor and you will have treasures in heaven. Then come follow me. But the young man decided Jesus was asking too much. Yeah. He yeah. went away sad because he had great wealth rather than obey Jesus and Jesus instructions he turned his back on the Lord and walked away now this young man really did not love God with all his heart no and he did not love his neighbors as himself no. he loved himself more and his wealth more so some of us today are relying on something other than God and what we must do is we must get back to listening to the instructions of the Lord. He was just throwing this out to this young man. And the young man felt like, well, I'm more worth than I can give. And you know what? He was lacking, Pastor. He was lacking. He didn't really listen to the instructions from the Lord. Well, the thing is, is about many of us, can f we think we follow the rules. But and, he, and we do. He said, Jesus told him. Yeah, he told him straight. Things, follow the rules. Yeah. I was saying that earlier, right? Yeah. I said, you know, the statutes... Of yeah. the Lord, the the observances yeah. of the Word of God, we have to do those. But there's so much more. There's so much. There more. are things that have that bind us to the world. There are things that uh, hinder. They become. They come between us and and God. They, right. they get between us, and it can be husbands and wives. Oh yeah. Some people put their. It can be children. Yeah. You know, and and I get it. I mean, look, we love our kids, man. We laid. I would die yes. for my children. Right. But would you really? Because you say you would die for your children. You might step in front of a train for them, but would you give up everything for them? Right. Would you right. would you would you give up everything? If they were kidnapped, you might give up your finances, but would you really give up your finances for them? 
That's right. Hello. I mean, would you, you really? lay down your life? In Christ, would you give? Would you surrender your life to Christ a hundred percent? Take up your cross and, and obey the Lord yeah. for your children, right? Because I can tell you, that's their only hope. Yeah, that's their only hope, if you will. That's their only hope. There is no hope in this world. You can you can leave them a legacy. You can leave them millions. You can leave them a living trust. But without Jesus Christ, if they do not yes. have a personal right. relationship with Jesus, if they don't see you, if they don't see, if they, everything that you let come between you and God are things that they're going to see. That's right. They're going to see, well, that, that's my dad's God. That's my dad's God. That's my mom's God. That's my or when grandparents' things, God. Or when things are more important than, than coming to church. Or giving to the Lord, or I mean, all of that, man. We watch the children you know, watch. I mean, my kids have been watching. You say, for "Oh, a you're a pastor. Time. You push church, man." I know what church does. I know what commitment does. The church is God's idea. The gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. Oh, I'm the church. You ain't squat. If you're not, if you yes. don't belong to the local church, unless you are have, unless you're a, an a, an invalid. Or in a right. home where you can't leave, or in prison, or something. Even in prison, you can you can go to church. Yeah. Uh, you know, I all these mavericks get out there and run around on the streets saying, "I'm the church. I'm the church." And they I'm the, they don't even know what ecclesia means. They don't. They, ecclesia means we are the called out ones. We go out and preach. Ecclesia means assembly. Yes. <laughs> yes. Assembly, coming together. Right. Okay, that's what ecclesia means. Study your Bible. All right, study deeper. Yes. Anyway, I'm not trying to make nobody feel bad. No. Uh, commit yourself. You don't have to come to Prayer Valley because I'll probably run you off anyway. Uh, I'm, I'll, I'm, I'll, I'll preach, I'll preach or not. things. You'll get saved. Yeah, you, I <laughs> preach things uh, that make people uncomfortable. And there are people that are with us for years, and then all of a sudden I'll preach something that will make them real uncomfortable. And uh, that's who God called me to be. I am not a flesh petter. Well, because we love people. And I'm not a flesh We better, love you guys. But I love God more. Yes. And Amen. Yeah. I do love people. And I want to see people uh, succeed. But God's first. Yeah. I want to see people succeed. Yeah. Amen. I want to see them. I want to see them. And, and I'm, I'm going to teach you. I'm going to teach this. I'm going to teach Prayer Valley. I want you to listen. I'm going to teach you how to pray creatively. I'm going to teach you how to get your prayers answered like never before. I don't care if you've been saved 100 years. I'm going to teach you how to get your prayers answered in the next few weeks. I'm going to go into a series of teaching you how to pray to get the heavens, the windows of heaven open, and you're going to see results. All right? Mark my words. What's the date today? December 8th? Yes. I said it on, on national airwaves. I'm going to teach you how to get your prayers answered like never before. Yes. Amen. Listen, I love you. God is doing some marvelous things. I'm excited about what he's doing. Listen, we are victorious. Yes, we are. All right. We are victorious. We overcome by the blood of the lamb and by the word of our testimony. Are you listening to me? Right. And, and, and we, we resist the devil and he flees from us. We have power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and we are empowered with the Holy Spirit and we can use the power of the Holy Spirit yes. to resist the enemy, to call those things that aren't. Are you hearing me? Yes. God is getting ready to do something miraculous in your life. Yes. If you'll tap in, he's going to do something miraculous in your life. I promise you. Amen. Yes. So Amen. Listen, I'll see you guys at 14172 Avon Avenue on Sunday morning at 9 a.m. All right. This Sunday morning, 9 a.m., 14172 Avon Avenue in the beautiful city of Lathrop, California. I love you guys. Love Beth you. and I, we, Pastor Beth and I, we love you. Amen? Amen. We'll be praying for you.